In the glamorous world of Hollywood, the actress Anita Ekeberg etched an indelible mark. Born on September 29, 1931, in Malmo, Sweden, she began her journey as a beauty pageant contestant, eventually winning the Miss Sweden title in 1950. This victory opened doors to the enchanting realm of cinema. The actress's career transcended borders, with her performances resonating in both European and American films. Her breakthrough role came in the 1960 film Ella Dolce Vita by Federico Fellini. In this captivating masterpiece, she famously waited in the Trevi Fountain, an image that has since become iconic. Although she never won an Academy Award, the actress's allure and charm were recognized in the industry. She was nominated for a Golden Globe for her performance in Call Me Buona in 1964. Her impact on the film industry and her fans remains enduring, with many still cherishing her work today. Throughout her life, the actress continued to step in various film and television productions, leaving a legacy that has captivated generations. Even in her later years, she remained a vibrant figure in the world of cinema, a testament to her lasting impact. Anita Ekeberg was a renowned Swedish-American actress, best known for her work in Italian cinema. She began her career as a beauty pageant contestant, eventually winning the Miss Sweden title in 1950. This opened doors for her to enter the world of film, where she would go on to captivate audiences with her unique charm and beauty. Perhaps her most iconic role was in the 1960 film El Vida, where she played the character of Sylvia. In one memorable scene, she waded into the Trevi Fountain in a stunning black dress, an image that has been etched in the minds of moviegoers for generations. We'd love to hear from you. Do you have a personal story about how actress Anita Ekeberg has inspired or impacted your life? Which work of hers do you hold closest to your heart? And what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic star? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Throughout her career, actress Anita Ekeberg worked with some of the biggest names in the industry, and her impact on the world of film is still felt today. In this video, we'll explore some funny, shocking, and sad facts about her life and career. So, keep watching to learn more. Born in Sweden in 1931, the actress spent her early years in a small fishing village. Her father was a chief engineer on a ship, and her mother was a housewife. The actress was the youngest of four children, and had a happy childhood, often helping her father repair boats. The actress's journey to stardom began when she was crowned Miss Sweden in 1950. She then went on to compete in the Miss Universe pageant, where she placed as the fourth runner-up. These pageants brought the actress to the attention of Hollywood, and she soon received offers to appear in films. In the beginning, the actress struggled to find her footing in Hollywood. She appeared in several small roles, often playing the part of a seductress or a femme fatale. However, she persevered, and eventually landed a role in the film War and Peace in 1956. This role helped establish the actress as a serious actress and paved the way for more significant roles in the future. One of the actress's most iconic roles was in the film L.A. Dolce Vita in 1960. Directed by Federico Fellini, the film is a classic of Italian cinema and features the actress in a memorable scene where she wades into the Trevi Fountain in a form-fitting dress. This scene has become one of the most iconic moments in film history and helped solidify the actress's status as a Hollywood legend. Throughout her career, the actress worked with some of the biggest names in Hollywood, including Frank Sinatra, Gary Cooper, and Kirk Douglas. She was known for her beauty, her talent, and her charisma, and she inspired many young actresses who followed in her footsteps. Despite the challenges she faced in her career, the actress remained humble and gracious. She often spoke about the importance of hard work and determination, and she credited her success to her upbringing and her family. In her later years, the actress retired from acting and spent her time traveling and enjoying her hobbies. She remained a beloved figure in Hollywood and will always be remembered for her contributions to the world of film. Anita Ekeberg, an actress born on September 29, 1931, in Malmo, Sweden, is worth celebrating for her significant contributions to the film industry. She began her career as a beauty queen, winning the Miss Sweden title in 1950 and placing as second runner-up in the Miss Universe pageant the same year. Ekeberg's physical beauty opened doors for her in Hollywood, where she appeared in over 50 films throughout her career. However, she was not just a pretty face. Her charisma and talent quickly gained her recognition in the industry. One of Ekeberg's most iconic roles was in Federico Fellini's film La Dolce Vita, released in 1960. In the movie, Ekeberg played the character of Sylvia, an American movie star who captivates the hearts of many, 
including a paparazzi journalist played by Marcello Mastroianni. The film features a scene where Ikeberg and Mastroianni wade into the Trevi Fountain in Rome, with Ikeberg playfully calling out Marcello. The scene became one of the most memorable moments in cinema history, cementing Ikeberg's place as a film icon. Ikeberg's impact on the film industry transcended her physical beauty. She was a trailblazer for European actresses in Hollywood, paving the way for future generations. Her work in La Dolce Vita also showcased her talent and versatility as an actress, proving that she was more than just a pretty face. In conclusion, Anita Ekerberg's contributions to the film industry are worth celebrating. Her beauty, talent, and impact on Hollywood continue to resonate with audiences today. From a young age, the actress was captivated by the glamour and allure of Hollywood. Growing up in Sweden, she would often sneak into her local cinema to watch the latest American films. It was there, in the darkened theater, that she first felt the spark of her passion for acting. One film in particular, Greta Garbo's Camille, left a lasting impression on the actress. She was mesmerized by Garbo's performance and the way she could convey so much emotion with just a glance. From that moment on, the actress knew that she wanted to be an actress and make people feel the way Garbo had made her feel. After winning the Miss Sweden beauty pageant in 1950, the actress moved to the United States to pursue her dream. She studied acting and worked tirelessly to perfect her craft. Despite facing numerous rejections and setbacks, she never gave up on her dream. Her big break came in 1953 when she was cast in the film Count the Hours. Although her role was small, she made an indelible impression on audiences and critics alike. From there, she went on to star in a number of successful films, including War and Peace, Back from Eternity, and Paris Holiday. But it was her role in Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita that would cement her place in film history. The iconic scene of her waiting in the Trevi Fountain in a strapless black dress has been endlessly imitated and parodied but never equaled. Despite her success, the actress remained humble and dedicated to her craft. She continued to work in film and television throughout her career, leaving behind a body of work that continues to inspire and entertain audiences to this day. The actress, known for her stunning beauty, was recognized by Empire Magazine as one of the 100 sexiest stars in film history, ranking at number 98. Her allure was so great that it even caught the attention of Bob Dylan, who mentioned her in his 1963 song, I Shall Be Free from the album The Freewheelin' Bob Dylan. In 1955, the actress made her debut in Hollywood and quickly made a name for herself. That same year, she was crowned Hollywood Deb Star, solidifying her status as a rising talent in the film industry. It's no wonder that her beauty and talent have left a lasting impression on both fans and industry professionals alike. The actress, born in Sweden, faced financial struggles early in her career. She moved to the United States with dreams of becoming an actress, but the journey was not easy. Without any connections in Hollywood, she worked as a model to make ends meet. Despite the hardships, she remained determined to break into the film industry. Skepticism was another obstacle the actress had to overcome. At 5'6", she was considered too tall for leading roles in Hollywood. Additionally, her thick Swedish accent was seen as a barrier. However, she refused to let these factors define her. Instead, she used them to her advantage, embracing her uniqueness and using it to create a distinctive on-screen persona. The actress's resilience was truly tested when she was cast in a small role in a film. Dissatisfied with the part, she took matters into her own hands. She approached the director and convinced him to rewrite the role, making it more substantial and memorable. The director agreed, and the actress's performance received critical acclaim. In addition to her creative solutions, the actress also sought help from mentors in the industry. She formed relationships with established actors and directors who offered guidance and support. These connections helped her navigate the complex world of Hollywood and secure better roles. Despite the challenges she faced, the actress remained optimistic and determined. She refused to let obstacles stand in her way and instead used them as opportunities to grow and learn. Her resilience and determination are a testament to her strength and determination as an actress. In the film Artists and Models, the actress played the character of Anita. This movie was copyrighted by Paramount Pictures Corp. Hal B. Wallace and Joseph H. Hazen. On December 21, 1955, it was the second film for Shirley MacLaine who displayed her singing and dancing talents in this film. Originally, Gwen Verdon was considered for the role that McLean played. The film was directed by Frank Tashlin, who also directed Martin and Lewis's final film, Hollywood or Bust. 
The production cost of artists and models was 1,7183, which was over its budget by 103,083. Due to budget overruns, a planned musical number, The Bat Lady, was not filmed. Swedish actress Anita Ekeberg, loaned to Paramount by Bajak Productions, played a significant role in the film. However, Bajak failed to pick up her contract option after the film. Ekeberg was also considered for the role of Honey Rider in the first James Bond film, Dr. No, which eventually went to Ursula Andress. The actress was engaged in a long-running personal feud with fellow starlet Cleo Moore. Despite this, Ekeberg co-starred with Andress in the Western comedy Four for Texas in 1963. Dean Martin introduced the song Inamorata in Artists and Models, which became one of his signature songs. The film is unrelated to the 1937 Paramount film of the same name, though both featured the annual Artists and Models Ball. HR news items include Terry Allen Rangno in the cast, but his appearance in the release film has not been confirmed. After several small roles in films, the actress's breakthrough moment came with the 1955 film War and Peace. Her performance as Helene Kuragin gained critical acclaim and established her as a serious actress. Famed director Federico Fellini was impressed by her charisma and cast her in his groundbreaking film Ella Dolce Vita in 1960. The iconic scene of the actress waiting in the Trevi Fountain became one of the most memorable images in cinema history. The actress's performance in Ella Dolce Vita earned her a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in a Comedy or Musical. This recognition further solidified her status as a leading actress in the film industry. Her work in Ella Dolce Vita was praised for its depth and complexity, with critics highlighting her ability to balance humor and drama. Throughout her career, the actress continued to take on challenging roles and worked with some of the most renowned directors in the industry. Her impact on the film industry is still felt today, with her performances continuing to inspire new generations of actors and filmmakers. In addition to her work in film, the actress also made a name for herself on television. She starred in the popular show The Red Skelton Show and received praise for her comedic timing and acting skills. Her work on the show further solidified her status as a versatile and talented performer. The actress's career was marked by several breakthrough moments, each one showcasing her talent and versatility. From her early roles in films like War and Peace to her iconic performance in L.A. Dolce Vita, the actress left an indelible mark on the film industry. Her work continues to be celebrated and studied, serving as a testament to her enduring impact and legacy. The actress is best known for her role as Sylvia Rank in Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita, where she made a splash in Rome's Treve Fountain while wearing a black gown with a plunging neckline. However, viewers may not have heard the actress's actual voice, as it was dubbed by another performer for this film. In addition to her work in Ale Dolce Vita, the actress also played the part of Helene Kuragina in the film War and Peace. Just like in Ale Dolce Vita, the actress's voice was dubbed by someone else for this movie. The actress was also a celebrity spokesperson for Foster Grant sunglasses during the 1960s, further solidifying her status as a public figure. Her work in film and as a spokesperson helped to establish her as a recognizable and enduring figure in popular culture. The actress, known for her work in films like Ale Dolce Vita, had a unique approach to her art. She once said, I don't think about method, I just do it. This spontaneous approach gave her performances an authenticity that captivated audiences. In El Dolce Vita, the actress played a character who was the embodiment of glamour and sensuality, yet she brought a sense of vulnerability to the role, making it more relatable and real. Her ability to balance these contrasting elements was a testament to her skill as an actress. The actress's personal experiences often influenced her work. Growing up in Sweden, she had a deep connection with nature, which she brought to her roles. She once said, I love the country, it's in my blood. This love of nature was evident in her performances, which often had a sense of freedom and openness. Her worldview was also reflected in her work. She was known for her independent spirit and strong will, which often came across in her characters. She once said, I've always been a rebel. I won't do what people tell me. This defiant attitude made her a symbol of female empowerment in a male-dominated industry. The actress's creative process was intuitive and instinctive. She once said, I don't think about it too much, I just feel it. This emotional connection to her work gave her performances a depth and authenticity that resonated with audiences. In the end, the actress's unique style and approach to her work left a lasting impact on the film industry. Her ability to balance glamour 
and vulnerability, her connection to nature, and her independent spirit made her a captivating and enduring presence on the screen. In July 2009, the actress was rushed to the San Giovanni Hospital in Rome after falling ill at her home in Genzano. Despite initial concerns, her condition was not considered serious, and she was kept under observation. The actress is perhaps best known for her role in the film Four for Texas, where she shared the screen with Ursula Andress. Both actresses had done nude screen tests, which were Hollywood's first, but the Hayes board removed all nudity from the final cut. Before her role in Four for Texas, the actress had been considered for the lead role in the short-lived television series Sheena Queen of the Jungle in 1955. However, her contract was bought out by John Wayne's production company, Badjack Productions. The actress, known for her role in La Dolce Vita, left an indelible mark on the film industry. Her performance as Sylvia created an iconic scene in the Trevi Fountain, which has since inspired numerous homages. The actress's ability to embody a character with such strength and vulnerability at once was a revelation. Director Federico Fellini once said, Anita has a kind of naturalness which makes her a creature both of the earth and the heavens. This observation speaks to the unique quality that the actress brought to her roles, a quality that has continued to inspire actors and filmmakers alike. The actress's influence can be seen in the work of contemporary directors such as Pedro Almodovar and Sofia Coppola, who have both cited her as an inspiration. Almodovar's use of vibrant colors and camp aesthetics can be traced back to the actress's performance in L.A. Dolce Vida. Meanwhile, Coppola's exploration of femininity and female desire in films like Lost in Translation and The Virgin Suicides echoes the actress's own portrayal of complex and multifaceted women. Moreover, the actress's impact extends beyond the realm of film. Her influence can be seen in the world of fashion, with designers like Dolce and Gabbana and Machino drawing inspiration from her iconic style. The actress's glamorous and larger-than-life persona has also made her a fixture in popular culture, with references to her appearing in everything from music videos to television shows. In the end, the actress's contribution to the film industry and popular culture is immeasurable. Her ability to captivate audiences and inspire filmmakers remains a testament to her enduring legacy. As Fellini once said, Ekerberg is a true film star. She has something that cannot be learned, that cannot be taught. In December 2011, the actress found herself in a dire financial situation. After spending three months in a hospital recovering from a broken thigh in Rimini, she returned to her villa, only to find it damaged in a fire, and her jewelry and furniture stolen. The Fellini Foundation, which she turned to for help, was also facing financial difficulties. The actress's career was not without its early highlights. In the 1953 film Abbott and Costello Go to Mars, she made an early appearance as a guard on the planet Venus. She was also mentioned in the song High School Confidential by the Canadian new wave group Rough Trade. Despite the challenges she faced later in life, the actress's impact on the film industry remains noteworthy. With a career spanning several decades, she left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. The actress, known for her work in L.A. Dolce Vita, led a life that extended beyond the glamour of Hollywood. She was born in Sweden in 1931 and grew up with a love for animals, which remained a constant passion throughout her life. In fact, she was once quoted as saying, I'd rather have a good dog any day than a man. Her love for animals even extended to her philanthropic efforts. She was actively involved in animal welfare organizations and used her platform to raise awareness for the cause. She believed that all creatures deserve love and compassion and she worked tirelessly to ensure that they were treated with kindness and respect. Apart from her love for animals, the actress was also passionate about art and culture. She was known to be an avid art collector and had a deep appreciation for the beauty and history of the world around her. She often incorporated her love for art into her work, using it as inspiration for her roles and performances. Despite her success in the film industry, the actress remained humble and down to earth. She valued her privacy and often retreated to her home in Italy to escape the limelight. She believed in living a simple and authentic life, and she never let her fame and fortune get in the way of her values and beliefs. In conclusion, the actress was a woman of great depth and complexity. Her personal values and interests informed her work, and she used her platform to make a positive impact on the world. Her love for animals, art, and culture, as well as her humility and authenticity, made her a truly remarkable individual both on and off the screen. After leaving Sweden in the early 1950s, 
the actress had little connection to her home country, only occasionally welcoming Swedish journalists into her home outside Rome. She did, however, make a notable appearance on the radio program Samar in 2005, sharing stories from her life. Despite stating that the Swedish people and media had not appreciated her enough, her personal and radio appearances were popular in Sweden. In her later years, the actress retired to Santa Lucia de Montana, outside Rome. She was one of five Swedish actresses to be nominated for a Golden Globe Award, alongside Ingrid Bergman, Lena Allen, Anne Margaret, and Rebecca Ferguson. Throughout her career, the actress made a name for herself in the film industry, with her performances leaving a lasting impression on audiences and critics alike. Even after her retirement, her impact on the world of cinema remains significant. Her contributions to the industry will not be forgotten, as they continue to resonate with film enthusiasts around the world. The actress Anita Ekeberg left an indelible mark on the film industry, particularly through her iconic role in Ala Dolce Vita. Her performance in the film's famous fountain scene has become synonymous with the movie itself. Ekeberg's legacy extends beyond her on-screen presence, as she was known for her strength and determination in a male-dominated industry. For aspiring professionals in the field, Ekeberg's advice would likely be to stay true to oneself and not be afraid to take risks. She once said, I don't mind making a fool of myself. I'm not afraid to be sexy. This attitude allowed her to take on bold and daring roles, ultimately contributing to her enduring legacy. In terms of future contributions, it's important for aspiring professionals to build on the work of those who came before them. This means not only learning from the past but also pushing boundaries and exploring new territory. By doing so, they can help shape the future of the industry and leave their own lasting impact. In the end, following in the footsteps of legends like Ekeberg means embracing one's own unique talents and using them to create something truly special. As Ekeberg herself put it, I never plan anything, I don't have any strategy, I just do what I like to do. By staying true to themselves and their passions, aspiring professionals can create a legacy all their own. After watching the actress's work, you might have noticed her unique charm and talent. The actress left an indelible mark on the film industry, particularly in the film. Her performance was captivating, making a significant impact on audiences worldwide. The actress was not just a pretty face, she brought depth and emotion to her characters. She was a true thespian who could easily adapt to various roles, showcasing her versatility and range. The show is another testament to her prowess as an actress. Despite being a bustling landscape filled with other accomplished actors, the actress managed to stand out with her unique charm and talent. As you reflect on her work, consider sharing your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think of her performance in the film or the show? Did you find her character intriguing? How did her performance resonate with you? If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking and sharing it with others who might appreciate the actress's work. And don't forget to subscribe for more celebrations of the creative spirits shaping entertainment. Together, let's cherish and honor the actress's enduring legacy in the film industry.